Good evening, everybody, and thanks for joining us here on social media. I wanted to give everybody just a brief update with uh, what we're expecting for snow, when we're expecting everything to start, and maybe we can even talk a little bit about some of the details that we already know for Monday's storm. As always, give me a second here. I'm going to pull up the Facebook Live to try to keep up with uh, some of the comments so that we can address those and answer them as they come up. All right. I'm also just going to give this a few minutes to, or a few seconds rather, to let people uh, jump in on this. We've only got a few people right now, but there we go. There goes the number. It always jumps after about 10 or 15 seconds live. So, Happy New Year to anybody watching. It's 2021, and what better way to start off the new year than talking about a snowstorm? And at this point, we're close enough that I can start with the current temperatures and talk a bit about how that's going to influence the weather over the next few hours and what to expect from there. Currently, we're looking at 30 degrees in Portland, 29 in Sanford, 28 in Freiburg, 29 in Gasset, 28 Lewiston. And this will be the first area that actually sees uh, the moisture move on in. But before we actually bring in uh, the snow showers themselves, we need to saturate the air. We talk about this a lot. Dew point is something we show in the summer to show just how humid out there it is. So with dew point sitting in the mid 20s and temperatures sitting right near 30 degrees, what ends up happening here is we'll see uh, those temperatures meet in the middle around 28, 29 degrees. And that's when it will start to snow. If you look at the radar right now, it looks like it would already be snowing through parts of New Hampshire and even into far southwestern Maine, Kittery and maybe the Berwicks. But uh, it's not reaching the ground just yet. We need to saturate that air before that actually happens. But we've been tracking the snowstorm. I was actually talking to a couple of my friends who live near Albany, New York, about the snow coming down, as well as some of my uh, friends and family who still live in Connecticut to just kind of figure out how this storm was evolving and see if we can tweak the forecast to be in our favor from there. So that's what we are dealing with. And I still expect snow to start up for parts of western Maine and northern New Hampshire around 11 o'clock tonight and it starts to expand and spread through the overnight hours and by the time we get to about three or four in the morning almost everybody will see snow. Even at the coastline I'm expecting this to start off as just plain snow. It's not until later in the day when we actually start to mix in some sleet and some rain but it does happen pretty early on the warm air with this system is not something to underestimate take a look at eight o'clock tomorrow morning at this point we've got mixing bar harbor the penobscot bay through the mid coast belfast to rockland down through wiscasset brunswick portland all the way to kittery and this is where we make that transition to just plain rain personally i think that we will probably see some of our heaviest snow rates especially in western Maine, from Freiburg to the Route 2 corridor uh, to Bethel and then Farmington. We'll probably see the heaviest snow around 7 o'clock in the morning till about 9 or 10, uh, depending on the exact timing of this. This is also when we start to see our first flakes fall through northern sections and eastern sections of Maine. By the time we get into the middle of the after the middle of the morning and then eventually the early afternoon, the system quickly keeps moving east as it starts to strengthen. We should end up with a pretty impressive uh, snow rate down east sometime in the early afternoon tomorrow, looking around one o'clock in the afternoon. We could see snow rates approaching two inches an hour for parts of Washington County, and that includes coastal sections. So if you're in Lubeck or Eastport and think that you'll be able to stay warm enough to fend off the snow, it doesn't look likely with this one, especially given the fact that the temperatures will actually fall on the backside of this storm when we move that colder air in. But it wraps up fairly quickly, and then by the time we get into Sunday, things are trending to be a lot drier. This is a product that we have available to us, and uh, you can't really take these numbers verbatim, but they're a good idea of what to expect. And so these are the actual snowfall rates. Um, and so it's very clear that the heavier snow starts around four or five in the morning and then spreads gradually north through parts of northern New Hampshire, Coas County into western Maine, looking at northern sections of Franklin and Oxford counties um, from Rangeley all the way down to Route 2. Great news for the ski resorts with this one. And these heavier snow rates shift east through the morning. By 9 o'clock, we're looking at heavier snow rates from Bangor to Millinocket and into the central highland and Katahdin region. 
could see snowfall rates between about an inch and an inch and a half. Maybe under some of the strongest and heaviest banding, we reach two inches an hour. I don't think this storm is quite as dynamic um, until it starts to actually move away from us. And that's why I think that if we actually realize those snowfall rates of two inches or even maybe two and a half inches an hour, it'll mostly be over Washington County. That's what I'm expecting as this storm starts to move off to the east. So I see the big question that everybody's been asking is uh, what exactly are we expecting for total? So here it is. Here's what I've changed for today. So far, widespread six to 10 inches in the pinkish purpley color that you see there. Still expecting three to six inches uh, for Lewiston and then south for inland sections of Cumberland and York counties along the coastline, York, Cumberland County, Sagadahawk County, and then up the mid coast all the way to the Penobscot Bay looking more like one to three inches because we'll start to see that warmer air take over and eventually transition from snow to sleet to just plain rain. But I wanna talk a little bit about where there's a little bit of uncertainty in these numbers. Uh, so I was talking with Ryan earlier today and the entire team, and we were discussing the sleet factor of this forecast. And so the question, of course, becomes where is the sleet versus snow cutoff going to be? So for now, I have six to 10 inches Freiburg and North, I think South. Once you get to Hiram, Sebago, down 302 toward Gray, and then into interior sections of York County, Limington, Limerick, uh, Standish even, that's gonna be more like three to six inches because I'm expecting the sleet, I start off as snow, sleet moves in, and then eventually there's maybe a little bit of snow to wrap up in the late morning, early afternoon. So that's where I have some uncertainty here. If the cold air winds, which is possible, we might see some of some spots like Sebago could end up a little bit more than six inches. Um, I'm not really expecting to see double digits out of interior sections of York County though, given the sleet. Augusta, same idea, right on the line of that six to 10 and three to six inch range. Depending on how things are looking in about 45 minutes to an hour once we start to get some newer data in, we might be able to drag that a little farther south to include Augusta and Hollowell and all those areas right around Augusta. Uh, just because if there's enough cold air to work with here, it's possible that Augusta could actually end up in that six to 10 inch range. But for now, right on the line of three to six and six to 10 inches. Otherwise, I feel pretty good about these numbers and where they stand. Same idea for uh, Eastern Maine and Central Maine. Bangor looking solidly at 6 to 10 inches. Bangor, Brewer going to be in that 6 to 10 inch range. Up I-95 all the way to Holton and then down Route 1 through Topsfield to Callis. 6 to 10 inches. Jackman, 6 to 10 inches. If there's anywhere that actually ends up closer to 11 or 12 inches, it could be somewhere between, say, Jackman and Greenville, depending on how the uh, terrain influences that. Maybe we end up with a couple of isolated spots that get close to a foot. I didn't feel confident enough to say that we would see, you know, a, a foot or more anywhere, but I wouldn't be surprised to hear of a few isolated spots that get there. Looking at three to six inches for northern sections of the county and right along the international border, three to six inches uh, for most of the interior coastal counties. So that's going to be parts of Hancock and Washington County, but right along the coastline again, totals will be just a little bit lower, except for maybe far, far sections. Uh, down east. So that would be like Lubeck, Eastport, that area. So I feel good about these numbers. Not quite as much uncertainty here because the storm itself will be strengthening and the dynamics will allow for just a little bit more cold um, to make its way into the storm and ultimately keep the uh, mixing and sleet chances lower for parts of eastern Maine general storm timeline for this is going to start up tonight again snow west at some point overnight but early saturday morning i'm talking from like one to four in the morning we start to see that snow move in and then by the time everybody wakes up roads will already be slick i'm thinking that by six o'clock or seven o'clock most of maine will be dealing with snow covered roads at that point in time most of new hampshire in the same boat there is the threat for some light icing for parts of southern New Hampshire, but I don't think it's going to be quite as big of a threat for us uh, 
locally. I'm keeping my eyes on that. If that changes, it doesn't seem like it at this point in time, especially with the colder solutions kind of trending for some of the models. So we're watching that. Overall, wind gusts, wouldn't be surprised to hear a few spots gust to 30 or 35 miles an hour through the day tomorrow. I'm not really concerned about damage with this, and the snow itself doesn't look particularly wet and heavy, so I don't think that's going to attribute to things like power outages or anything uh, like that. So this is the timeline for that. By Saturday noon, the heaviest snow will be central and then into the early afternoon the heaviest snow will be down east saturday night the snow tapers off we clear out for sunday here's a look at what the national weather service currently has out for uh, winter weather headlines we've got winter storm warnings in effect for much of maine with winter weather advisories in the purple winter storm warnings in the pink and again, this is mostly just going to be for road conditions. Travel is going to be slick. I know there's a lot of people out there who have been itching to hit the slopes. And if that's the case, if you've been waiting to break the snowmobile out, if you haven't had that chance to get uh, your winter recreation fix, just keep in mind that we haven't really seen a uh, big widespread snowstorm yet. I mean, we have seen some snow, but this could be the biggest one of the season so far for like the Bangor area, especially. Um, so just keep in mind that roads are going to be slick and if you are going to try to get out and enjoy the snow tomorrow just take it slow be careful reduced visibility also going to be an issue with this storm now i see a couple of people asking about uh what to expect for <laughs> what to expect for monday monday is an interesting system so here's sunday we'll have high pressure over us we get to enjoy quieter conditions sunday Definitely a quiet end to the week after weekend rather after what will be active tomorrow and at that point in time there will be another storm off the coast of the Carolinas and we have to watch the progression of this one closely. It moves its way up the coastline excuse me. It moves its way up the coastline and as it does so um, it could end up running into what we call a block so that high pressure that you see off to the uh, upper right hand part of the screen there that could it effectively slows down that low pressure system so it slows the storm down and the storm itself will start to meander off the coast of maine this model in particular is showing that we do bring enough moisture far enough north to have the potential for maybe some snow inland and some mixing at the coastline the issue with this storm and why it's a bit more difficult to forecast is one, the track is very uncertain at this point in time. If it trends south, it'll go out to sea and we might not see anything from this. If it trends north and it meanders off the coast of Maine for a day, two days, maybe two and a half or three days, we could be talking about potential for some stormy conditions Monday, Tuesday, even lingering into Wednesday. And so that's why I think that this is, uh, just a little more difficult and i'm hoping that once we start to get some better data on this through the weekend we can really nail down the forecast track for that and get a better idea of how it's actually going to track um, because this is really the the big this could have some bigger impacts depending on how it all works out but for now just know that there's the potential for more stormy conditions on monday and tuesday Given the time of the year it is, that could mean snow for a lot of us and mixing or rain at the coastline. Um, but I still think that the bigger story right now is mostly what is on the way for Saturday. Here's one last look at those snow totals. I just see a couple more people asking about that. All right, I'm just scrolling through the comments. Yeah, I see a few people talking about how they're going to have to uh, drive through this. Just take it slow and be careful. Um, again, I think that roads are going to be pretty slick by the time most of us wake up tomorrow. And that means that uh, it's going to be tough to kind of keep up with some of the snowfall rates, especially as those stronger bands move through central Maine and eastern Maine a little later in the day. Uh, somebody asked about power outages. Don't think power outages are really on the table with this one, which is great news. Somebody asked about a delay for airlines. Um, I, I mean, if you're flying into or out of Bangor, I'd imagine there will be some issues. 
Portland, I don't think it'll be quite as much of an issue, though, just because we do eventually switch over to just plain rain. And I want to just uh, clarify here that when I say power outages, I mean widespread power outages are unlikely. But given the nature of these storms, it's always possible that there could be a couple of isolated incidents. Um, Wiscasset is currently on the three to six and one to three inch line. Um, and I've got a question about Poland, if it's in the three to six inch line. It's gonna be close. That's where there's a little bit more uncertainty in the forecast. For now, if you're in Poland, I'd say bank on near six inches. Could be maybe an inch or two either way. Um, All right, I think that's about it for uh, these questions. Brunswick is uh, right on the line of the three to six inch range, but I'm, I'm thinking it's more gonna be like one to three. It's actually a little farther inland from Brunswick where I think we can really mix in enough cold air to not have to worry about that transition to rain. Um, I know it's kind of tough to see, but that's why I have the zoomed in version pulled up right now, just so people can pick out their spots a little more easily, pick out their towns, where they live, where they work, things like that. And here it is again through Eastern Maine. Uh, somebody asked about Eastport. I'm thinking Eastport should be able to pick up a solid three inches out of this one. Um, being right on the coast, being right on the water always messes with the forecast a little bit, but with the cold air and the strengthening system, I don't know. I'd be surprised if down east only saw mixing. I'm thinking that this will probably wrap up as a bit of snow. All right, so I think that's about it um and of course we're going to have more updates moving forward and ryan will be back in uh tomorrow morning with hopefully what will be the final iteration of this map i don't anticipate any big changes with this um this this storm system while the mixing is a little harder to nail down is not quite as complex as the storm system that we'll be watching for the beginning of the work week so Thanks everybody for joining us. Um, I'll be back at 11 o'clock this evening. And if you have any other questions, we do have a weather blog out on our website that should answer questions about storm timing and the timeline, things like that. Um, otherwise, tune in tonight at 11 and then tune in tomorrow morning for Ryan's updates. He'll be, of course, dealing with the snow in the thick of it because it'll be falling when those newscasts start. So thanks everybody and we'll see you at 11. Have a great night.